Here we go with another manufacturer video, and this is part one of a two-part series. A little bit of a yin-yang situation. Part two is gonna highlight every manufacturer's smoothest coaster. And today, we're gonna look at the other side of the coin. Coasters are supposed to be fun, enjoyable, forceful, but they aren't supposed to make your brain bleed. These manufacturers have coasters out there they can be proud of, but they also have others that need a lot of help. Today, I wanna celebrate those janky transitions, those square wheels, and especially those pesky potholes. This is every manufacturer's roughest coaster. Just a note, I can only judge how rough or smooth a ride is based on personal experience. So this will just be coasters that I've ridden. If you've ridden something that you think belongs on here, let me know in the comments. Also, for this list, there isn't a good choice for every manufacturer. And for some, I have no personal experience with them. Because of that, I'm leaving some of them out. Sorry to Jinma, Pax, Pinfari, SBF Visa, and Vegan. You have to sit this one out. Leading off, Aerodynamics. Here we have a lot of older coasters. From the Matterhorn in 1959 to X2 in 2002. And although other manufacturers have a lot of coasters that have aged really well, for Aero, that really isn't the case. There are a lot of jerky transitions out there, but two stand out as actually painful. One is Corkscrew at Michigan's Adventure. This 1979 looper is very simple. A drop, a turn, and a couple corkscrews. But my head was in pain from the start. For Arrow, I'm going with Desperado at Buffalo Bills. This hypercoaster sits on the California-Nevada border, and I got my first ride back in 2001. At the time, it was seven years old, and it was already painful. We marathoned it back then, and it left us bruised up. I rode this as recently as 2019, and as you would expect, it was no better. When you're going 80 miles an hour, you want good transitions, and you're not going to find that here. It's a fun ride, but you gotta take the pleasure with the pain. B&M is the poster boy for well-made quality rides. You pay more, but you get a solid, reliable product. Most of these are smooth, but as some of these age, you get that vibration, or what we nerds call the B&M rattle. Scream at Magic Mountain is one of the worst offenders of this. Finishing off his 21st season and always seems to drill a hole in my head. But there is one that rattles and bangs your head around. That's a rare combination for B&M. That would be the original B&M, Firebird at Six Flags America. I've only ridden this once, and once was enough. I'm just not used to getting headbanging on a B&M. So right away, this shot to the bottom of my B&M list. Custom Coasters International, or CCI, is a target-rich environment. Their last coaster was built in 2002, so you got a ton of old woodies. Some parks take better care of their rides than others. Cliffs Amusement Park has the New Mexico Rattler, and although I rode this six times in a row in 2017, by 2022, I thought one was more than enough. It's a very forceful ride, but maybe try and invest in round wheels. My pick for CCI is the boss at Six Flags St. Louis. I thought this was way too rough back in 2018, and I had the pleasure of riding it twice more in 2023, but it was no better. This is so big and long and fast. 150 foot drop, 66 miles an hour, 4,600 feet of track, and you're praying for a smooth ride with those stats, but you're not gonna get one. Every drop is a battle, and the only mercy is those final breaks. Chance Rides doesn't have a lot to choose from, but if you look at all their modern rides, they all run pretty smooth. I'm forced to go back to their old model, the one that used to be everywhere, but luckily has disappeared for the most part. This is Swiss Toboggan at Little America. It's not so much rough as it is abrupt and jerky, it looks like it was designed and constructed in someone's garage, and it's definitely not smooth, so I'm calling it the roughest chance. The Din Corporation made coasters for four years in the late 80s and early 90s, and some of these are now some of our favorite RMCs. Of the four still operating, I think two of them are on the rough side. One is Wolverine Wildcat at Michigan's Adventure. I really enjoyed this ride, but that was despite its jackhammer roughness. It did get some GCI Titan track after I rode it in 2021, so maybe now it's better, though I heard they didn't put enough on it to make a big difference. My pick is a coaster that only seems to be getting worse, Timberwolf at Worlds of Fun. I really enjoyed this in 2018, but in 2021 and 2022, it was quite brutal. Another long ride at over 4,200 feet of track, and I'm hoping that Worlds of Fun fixes this or RMCs it soon. Great Coasters International, or GCI, has some hits and misses. Some of their best coasters are absolute head shakers. I'm talking about Thunderhead at Dollywood, Gold Striker at California's Great America, and especially Renegade at Valley Fair. That was nonstop clattering all over the track, but what an amazing layout. My pick for GCI is not one of their best. In fact, I think it's their worst. This is Roar at Six Flags America. 
I think it has a boring and forceless layout, and last time I wrote it in 2019, it was just way too rough to even try and enjoy. It needs to be RMC'd as soon as RMC can drive their trucks from Idaho to DC. Just get it done already. Gerslauer knows how to make a glossy smooth coaster, but also can give you a ride that makes you wonder what just happened. Potholes are the name of the game, and TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe has plenty of them. At the other Nick U in Minnesota, my last ride on SpongeBob SquarePants was not great. Maybe avoid the front row on these Eurofighters. Speaking of Eurofighters, for Gerslauer, I'm choosing Mystery Mine at Dollywood. With those over-the-shoulder restraints, those jerky transitions, and just overall weird track profiling, Mystery Mine is an interesting and quirky ride, but by no means is it smooth and painless. Giovanola doesn't have much, but everything I've ridden is smooth. I don't know about Anaconda at Gold Reef City, but I'm willing to bet that's smooth too. I'm leaving Giovanola out of this video. The Gravity Group has a lot to offer for this category. I think their family wooden coasters are nice and smooth, but when they go big, it gets a bit shaky. Mindblower at Fun Spot Kissimmee was rough from the very start. It opened in 2017, and by the time I wrote it in 2018, it was already beating me up. Three years later, it was even worse. I wrote it eight times in 2018, and I could only do two before tapping out in 2021. This got an RMC retrack in 2023, so that should help. My pick for the Gravity Group is their first coaster, Hades 360. I love this ride. It's such an amazing layout, so forceful, but I can only ride this once and I need a break. It's another monster, 140 foot drop, 60 miles an hour, 4,700 feet of track, but it batters your internal organs from start to finish. Probably the roughest active wooden coaster that I've ridden. Hopkins has three coasters on my personal list. Texas Tornado at Wonderland, Desert Storm and Patriot at Castles and Coasters. And even though they look like some of the jankiest rides you can imagine, they're all pretty smooth. Like Giovanola, Hopkins does not get to play this game. Intamin has a very diverse catalog of coasters, and when it comes to the roughest, there's a lot of different types of options. You got their bobsled, Lava Bora at Six Flags Over Texas. This destroys you every time it straightens out to enter the brake run. Unless you're in the front, watch your legs. You also have their hyper coaster, Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. That had a terrible rattle when I rode it in 2023. I don't know why a ride like that could bounce around so much. Speaking of bouncing, you also have their wooden coasters, including their original one, American Eagle at Six Flags Great America. That helix gets very bouncy the faster it goes through it, and it's by no means smooth, but I think it's tolerable. Their roughest coaster is their only space diver model, Flashback at Magic Mountain. This has been gone for 20 years, but it still haunts me. Those hairpin turns, the way it curved around to line itself up for the next hairpin turn, it would demolish your head into the restraint. Just a horrible ride. Mock Rides has done a great job making smooth coasters over the years. Some people may automatically think, oh, no doubt, it's Coast Rider at Knott's. But that's mainly just because it has shin guards, and those are terrible for any adult trying to ride the Wild Mouse. That's not roughness, just bad restraint design. My pick for Mock Rides is Helix at Leesburg. I don't think this is that rough. This is kind of a default pick because there's no better choice. This does have a rattle, and it's worse in the front and the back. And even though you can overlook the rattle and enjoy the ride, if you ride this too many times in a row, it can take its toll on you. Maurer is known for their spinning coasters. All of those run pretty well. I think most people will agree with me on this. Their roughest coaster is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Orlando. I think it's tolerable. Others say it ruins the ride. And even though I absolutely love this ride's forces, I'd be lying if I said I didn't notice how bumpy it was. Again, nothing you can't overlook and still enjoy the ride, but it could stand to be a whole lot smoother. Morgan is known for their hyper smooth hyper coasters, so honestly, I don't have a good choice here. If I had to choose one, I would say Mamba at Worlds of Fun kinda gets jerky into Helix. I'm not complaining, Morgan does a great job making their ride smooth, they just need to work on their airtime hills a little bit more. Premier Rides does an awesome job making their ride smooth, and I can't think of a great choice for the roughest one. I guess by default, it would have to be Joker's Jinx at Six Flags America. This launch spaghetti bowl coaster rises to the top and works its way down, avoiding supports, keeping proper clearances, going into inversions, and because of that, those transitions can be awkward and jerky. Not bad, but still the roughest. Next up, Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters, or PTC. They have a catalog of coasters that spans from over 100 years old to just under 50 years old, so you can bet a bunch of these wooden coasters have gotten rough. Surprisingly, most of them are still smooth, but not all. Blue Streak at Cedar Point beat me to a pulp this year. I don't think that's always been the case. On the other side, Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Over Georgia was on my shortlist for all-time roughest coaster, but the park did some amazing work on it, and now it's almost smooth. 
My pick is another coaster that beat me down this year, Screamin' Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. This wasn't bad the first time I rode it in 2018, but both my rides this year were just crazy brutal. It's a fun, out of control ride, and maybe the roughness adds to the chaos, but it's a hard one to re-ride. Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, is known for their smooth coasters, but over the years, we've seen some of their topper track wooden coasters get rough. I also had a stupid rough ride on one of the Raptors last year, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This was so out of character, and I think they were doing work on the trains, which explains why it was running so bad. In general, over the last five years, I've come to find that Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City is RMC's roughest coaster. It's huge, 162 foot drop, 68 miles an hour, almost 3,000 feet of track, and it's absolutely out of control, but you're bouncing the whole time. It's not so rough it hurts, but its roughness pushes the lap bar down, so you end up painfully stable. I wouldn't hate to see this get steel eyebox track, the same way Lightning Rod did. The Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA, has a small collection of great candidates. The only one that I rode was Son of Beast, and that absolutely deserves to be on here. But if you wanted to pick Bandit at Movie Park Germany, Coaster Express at Parque Warner Madrid, Magnus Colossus at Terra Mitica, Rattler at Fiesta Texas, I think you can make a case for any of them. SNS is usually pretty smooth, but there are some exceptions. Gale Force at Playland's Castaway Cove had to be torn down and rebuilt after its first year. It was that rough. Now it's fine. Steel Curtain at Kennywood has a dull rattle the whole way through. Not bad, but also weird for a brand new coaster. For the first time, I'm going off my personal board for my pick. This is Hellcat at Clementon Park. I heard this got retracked, so maybe it's better now. But for a while, this had the reputation of being horrendously rough. And this 20-year-old wooden coaster is on my bucket list just to see how bad it is. Schwarzkopf has a lot of old coasters, their reign of power being between the 70s and 80s, and for the most part, these have held out great. They've held up, on average, much better than Eros coasters have. I don't have a great pick for Schwarzkopf, so I'm going with Riddler Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia. Not bad at all, but on that helix before the big first ravine dive, it does get kinda rough. That rough patch is all it takes for me to call this the roughest Schwarzkopf. That's how good these are. Skyline doesn't have much of a catalog, but this is an easy call for me. Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This didn't last long at the park, but I was lucky enough to ride it in 2019, and yikes. It's a pretty simple layout. Just a dive loop, and another dive loop, and another dive loop, and that's about it. But I couldn't believe how rough it was. There was no reason for it to run like that, but it did. And now, it can't torture anyone else anymore. Togo was not a lot of fun in America. Building coasters here from 1984 to 1997, their last one being my choice for this list, Windjammer Surf Racers at Knott's Berry Farm. I remember this being so jerky, and unless you're riding in the front, you can't see where you're going. So when you combine zero visibility, plus bad Togo transitions, plus big bulky blocks around your ears, I'll let you do the math. Jerky, painful, boring, and on top of all that, unreliable. No wonder this only lasted three years. Vacoma has been awesome as of late, but if you want a rough coaster, take your pick from just about anything from the 70s, 80s, or 90s. A lot of my friends in Europe would say it's Guterix at Park Asterix. Some might say Thunder Coaster at Tusenfrid. I may just agree with you on that one. I want to go the route of the SLC, and although 2023 gave me some terrible rides on Flight Deck at Canada's Wonderland and Nopuko at Lost Island, I'm still going with the now-defunct T3 at Kentucky Kingdom. This didn't have the typical SLC restraints that bang your head. They had comeback trains that had their own problems, but I just couldn't believe how rough this ran on the track. Non-stop shaking, such an unpleasant experience. T3, let me just say, rust in pieces. Zamperla doesn't have a great catalog of coasters, at least not yet, and they specialize in family coasters. None of them seem that smooth, but there is one that seems especially rough. Roll and Thunder at Tropic Falls is one of their Thunderbolt models, and after riding them both, Roll and Thunder was the worst one. It has a good layout, but like I've said before, the car runs through the track like an old shopping cart with a busted wheel. I dragged Sophie on this one, and she still hates me for it. Some might say that Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland should be on this list, but I don't think that's rough. Just those twists and turns don't jive well with those ear pads, not being able to see where you're going. It's definitely more painful, but not rougher. Zero is like Zamperla, lots of small scale coasters with your occasional big boy coaster, and I don't think any of them are rough. If I had to choose, I would say Wicked at Lagoon. Last time I rode in 2019, I wouldn't call it glossy smooth, but I also wouldn't call it rough. Zero does a pretty good job, so I can't complain. Now for a bonus manufacturer, ENF Myler. They mostly make kids rides, but I've also ridden some of their portable models and they're definitely not for kids. 
I usually leave them off these lists, but I think it's appropriate to let them in the group this time. For their roughest coaster, I'm going with Hurricane at Fun Spot Atlanta. I love some good janky airtime, and Hurricane has that. It's those turns that get me. They're just oddly shaped, and they ride like a car crash. Brace yourself, wait for the airtime, and you'll have a good time. I know you're only riding this because Air Force One broke down, but it's still fun. That's a wrap on every manufacturer's roughest coaster. If you have any disagreements based on your own experiences, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check back next week for my video on every manufacturer's smoothest coaster. If you're watching this video later, that's in my end screen and the links down below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server. That has a new section for a nightly news roundup in the theme park world. And my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. And my baseball channel, if you also happen to love baseball like I do. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.